Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB here on FlossTube, but also over on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday Morning Briefing. It is Sunday the 1st of May today, so it is May Day. Happy May Day um, to all of you out there. May is, May will soon be done. <laughs> this is the month for exams, so this is the busy, busy month. So I'll blink and I'll miss it. Um, this year I'm just... Everything is all about the exams, just because they're the first proper exams that we've had in a couple of years. And all my attention is kind of focused on, on the students at the moment. So I'm not doing mania. Um, I am gonna try and do a few finishes, try and get out a few things back, dig them out from the depths of the whip pile and, uh, and finish off a few things. But I'm, I'm not in a position to be doing mania at the moment. Um, I think of the things I started last mania, I may have finished one, maybe, but even possibly not one. So um, I, I just haven't got the headspace for starting lots and lots of new things. So I'm going to try and finish off a few things. Plus, the things that I'm stitching at the moment, I am really, really enjoying. So... Um, so yeah, I just don't feel like I need to be starting loads of things. I'm going to save my mania. Mania will strike me at some point during the remaining months of the year. So I'm, I'm reserving the right to have a mania whenever I like. <laughs> I'm keeping my mania in my back pocket ready for whenever I choose. I've got a couple of things to show you this week. Um, I have got a fully finished, which if you've seen my Instagram, you will have seen. I've done quite a bit of progress on um, the Year in the Woods cell, but that's pretty much all I've worked on. I've been so happy working on it, that that's pretty much what I've what I've worked on. Um, I've got a few things that I really want to show you as well that are not stitchy related, but you're my tribe and I think that you will appreciate them as much as I appreciate them. Um, little tiny bit of haul and just all the usual, all the usual good stuff. So today, today is Chris's birthday. So um, I haven't seen him all day and he's asleep now because <laughs> I film on Saturday night and it's only about 20 past nine and he's asleep now. And I just looked in on him and he is diagonal across the bed. So this is gonna be difficult for later. Um, why, why haven't I seen him all day? Because his way of celebrating his birthday was to run an ultra marathon. So he has run just over 35 miles today on the Pembrokeshire Coast Path. Um, which many of you I'm sure will know from doing walks and you may have done ultramarathons yourself on the uh, on the Pembrokeshire Coast Path. I never have. <laughs> I've done a half marathon before but never never anything more than that so he is uh, pooped I believe is the the proper term for it. He is he's absolutely spent. It's not the furthest he's ever run. He did the UTMB a few years ago, which is the Ultra Trail de Mont Blanc, which is 105 miles around Mont Blanc, um, which was somewhat of an achievement, a massive achievement. Um, but yeah, he's pooped out today. And the other thing that happened today is it was Barley Saturday. So um, in Cardigan on the last Saturday before the May Day um, is Barley Saturday. So what they do is they have a huge field up in the up in the town and they basically have a huge horse show, um, breeding horse show. So it's not jumping or dressage or anything like that, but it's where they bring all the best um, Welsh mountain ponies, all the best um, Welsh cobs and they have a show. And then they um, cordon off all the high street and they parade all the horses down the high street and then they will run them down the high street <laughs> which is the best bit because you see all these kind of like Welsh cobs and they're they're raring to go and then you've got this sort of small tiny Welshman kind of hanging on for dear life trying to make sure this horse doesn't just run away down the full length of the high street and then they have a tractor parade and then they have a vintage car parade and it's all really really good fun so um so it's Barley Saturday today um yeah so Ness and I and my mum we went and did that we didn't have to run 35 miles on the coast path <laughs> for which we were very grateful right I keep looking at my notes because I've got kind of bits and pieces all over the place to try and remember today okay I'm going to show you a bit of stitching and then 
I shall continue with the waffle. So this is my finish. Now I'm going to have to try and hold this together because it's pinned, but I don't have a backboard for it. It was a vintage frame and the backboard was one of those ones that were just, it was just like an old banana box. And so when I took it off, it just kind of splintered into a million pieces. So I need to cut another backboard for it. But this is the beautiful Caroline Scott 1821 by Northumberland Sample House. Now, if it looks like it's not quite sat in the frame, it's just because it isn't. <laughs> no, it's framed straight but there's a little bit of play in the frame until you put the backboard on. So it's stitched on a 32 count that I hand dyed myself. It hasn't got much mottling in it. And then I used this vintage frame that I bought from eBay a long, long time ago. A long, long time ago. And it's just got a little gold slip in it. And I know it's not perfect. The, the sides have got a little bit more of a gap than the top but I really like her in that frame and to be able to use a vintage frame I'll, I'll take that I'll happily take that so she's available on Northumberland Sample Houses um, let me just lift that over Northumberland Sample Houses Etsy shop so you can go and buy her I think she's probably my favorite sampler that I've ever stitched um, just just something about her the colors the border just just loved it so I would highly recommend that if you are looking for a sampler that you go and try her now I did have a question actually and it's worth pointing out there are no specialty stitches nothing that requires linen for definite so if you're an Ada stitcher you could definitely do this sampler it's all full crosses and there's nothing as I said over one or specialty stitch wise so definitely go and grab her and have a look at all of the other things that Anita has got as well. I've picked out a couple of other samplers of hers that I want to start. One is the um, Stitch Along that's starting in June. One of them was the one that she released last two or three weeks ago, maybe. I'm going to have to put some pictures up. So I'll put the picture up of the Stitch Along there and I'll put the picture up of the most recent other sampler there because I forgot to look at their names. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't started them yet. They're kitted up. I haven't started them yet. I just haven't had a chance. The same with the Teresa Kogut thing that I really want to stitch as well. The cherries. Um, I haven't, just haven't had a chance to start it. But as soon as the exams are over, as soon as the classes go, I'll feel like I can breathe again. Right. Let me show you what else I've been stitching. So a year in the woods I've been stitching. And I've got some quite good progress on... The spring. Um, all three springs have been released now so you've got the jack rabbit, the ferret and the um, raccoon. Sorry let's say that the other way. The jack rabbit, the raccoon and the ferret and then oh my god have you seen the bear? The first of the um, summer ones that should go or could go on the bluey colour fabric. Um, oh my god I can't wait to get my hands on that bear. So this is where I am. I have started the ferret. By that I mean I've put one strand, strand of grass in. But what I've mostly been doing is the raccoon. I don't think I've done any more on the hair since I last showed you. But there is that raccoon. Isn't it amazing? So I'm really hoping... I'm just loving working on this at the moment so I'm really hoping that I can get a really good way through all three of these if not finish a couple of them um, before the bear comes out but I'm quite happy with the fact that I'm just kind of starting them getting a good way along each one and then perhaps over the summer when I've got a little bit more time I shall go back and I shall finish off each one in turn to try and give myself a good shot at actually finishing this stitch along on time Strange things have happened. Don't look at me like that. Strange things have happened. Mum's just putting Nesta to bed at the moment. So if you happen to hear her, that's what's happening. I forgot. I forgot to show you. Now, while I was talking about the Northumberland Sample House, I meant to mention 
um, Anita sent me a prize for um, stitching uh, Caroline Scott and I know she sent out a couple of other prizes for some other samplers as well um, and this was my prize now I did ask Caroline if I could show it on I don't mean Caroline Caroline's the name of the sampler Anita I did ask Anita if I could show this on Instagram and she said yeah it's fine I'm gonna be releasing them on Saturday but I couldn't I couldn't steal her thunder so she had shown them now so this was my prize my very own Caroline Scott tea towel. How amazing is that? I opened it up and I was like, well, I didn't need to stitch that now. I could have just framed that. <laughs> but there we go. How amazing is that? So I know she's got two others. And I must admit, I forgot to look up the names of the other two samplers that she has had converted into tea towels. But we're in the process of hopefully sorting out our kitchen so um i'm keeping this nice and it'll be one of those tea towels that just sits on the front of the uh, on the front of the oven and nobody ever touches it a bit like a nice bathroom towel you know it's not for use it's just for show so yeah you can get those from her etsy shop so if you've stitched one or even if you haven't and you fancy a, a lovely tea towel go and get those from anita not caroline anita what else did I get? What else have I got to show you? Let's do a freebie. Let's do a freebie before I forget that as well. And I just found this really cute one. I wouldn't necessarily stitch it on the same linen that they've chosen, but I do like the actual design. And this is the design. And it's just a little deer in kind of like a circle of kind of florals and rose hips and all sorts of bits and bobs. Looks like there's a few few specialty stitches in terms of things like French knots, um, but you could use beads if you hate French knots. I, have, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with them. I can do them, I don't always want to do them. Um, so, how cute is that? And that is the chart. Now, this is the name of the Facebook group that I got it from. So I'm going to just hold that over. So I'm not showing too much of the chart, even though it's a freebie. And I'm going to have a go at it. It's called La Comtesse and Le Point de Croix. It's just got cut off there. That's probably butchered it. That's probably butchered it. My um, French comes from watching Allo Allo when I was growing up. <laughs> Although I do have an A in French GCSE, but I'm not entirely sure how. So go along and I'll put the link for that download as well. If I can find it elsewhere other than Facebook, I will put that as well because I know not everybody's on Facebook, but um, I've only seen it on Facebook. So that may be where it is. You can hear Ness is actually singing. Now she's from the same school of singing as I am and when I was about 12 I was in the school choir and the music teacher actually asked me to mime rude he just came up to me and said this one isn't in your vocal range could you just mime it and I knew my days in the choir were numbered at that point it's not harmed me I wish I could sing but I can't I can't carry a tune in a tin bucket what else have I got here to show you Something, <laughs> I think she's just going blah, 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 blah. Um, which is interesting that she sat there going blah, 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 trying to work, uh, fall asleep. Her father's fast asleep listening to hip hop as far as I could work out. I live with mad people and that will come to, I'll show you something in a minute, will prove that. Two seconds. Ness! Give it a rest! Give it a rest! I picked this up on a little stash and load. Have you any wool? Love that one. Brenda Gervais. I've got a proper little collection of um, Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. I haven't really stitched that many. I must get around to doing some more. But I love them. And then I got a very special package from Fox and Rabbit. So um, 
you may have heard Karen and Bren say, and I think I said last week as well, I um, help send on the packages in the UK. So they send them to me and then I go to the post office and send them on so that everyone's just paying like a local, a local charge, a local post. And so um, I'm technically in the neutrals, but Karen and Bren have sent me the coloured as well this month. So, and they had a little extra something in there as well, which I shall show you in a minute. So I'll show you the um, neutrals. Now, if you don't want to see, and you haven't had yours yet, then just turn me off for, well, fast forward this bit, get somebody else to watch it, just skip forward a min minute or two. So this one is called Curry Powder. So it's a really interesting, kind of very deep golden, almost yellow and curry powder I think is probably the best description of it that they could have uh, they could have chosen. Um, I get a 36 count and it's interesting because in the little letter that they that they write they're saying that is this a colour or is it a neutral and they they said, oh, some people might be a little bit disappointed and feel that that's more of a colour rather than a neutral. But there are some samplers out there that do use a really strong, almost like golden, darker, even darker than this background. Um, and they give the, gave the example as Cathy Barrick's Dutch sampler. So I'm really excited about actually giving this a try. It's not something that I would have picked out, but, 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 that's why you buy part of a club isn't it because it gives you just that little bit of an impetus to try something that's just a little bit outside of your wheelhouse so I'm certainly going to be looking out for some samplers or some things that would fit on this and it, it is a it's definitely a neutral I think it's definitely a beautiful beautiful stitch and I think that a very a lighter fabric lighter fabric lighter floss will definitely pop on this so I'm intrigued I'm intrigued to give that a try and they sent me the color one as well look at this color oh look at that look at that now what's it called it is called blue wren so it's based on an Australian bird called the blue wren um, and again in terms of picking out a colour name, you couldn't have done a much better job than that, could you? I think that's absolutely glorious. I love that. There we go. I can't wait to pick out something to go on there. So thank you very much. The other thing that came, the other thing that came was a little pin badge. I thought it was a needle minder until I took the back off it. And it is a pin badge. And this is the little pin badge. So it's a little fox and rabbit. Now, little tip. I looked at mine and I thought, oh, it's scratched. I thought the front of it was scratched. And then I looked really, really closely and I realised, you know, quite often when you get perspex things, there's a film on the top. These have been cut with the film still on them. So... It was pretty pretty hard to get off because obviously when you cut it it sort of almost melts the edge a little bit but I could tell mine was still left on because it had like a scratch across it so I just managed to lift it off and there's oh wow that was <laughs> that was crazy wasn't it a proper look there's me isn't that cool not cool <laughs> A proper fox and rabbit little pin badge there so you could put that on the outside of a, a project bag or if you've got like a little pouch for keeping all of your scissors and things like that I'm gonna do that again because that was really weird do you reckon that'll get me my screenshot little things eh um so yeah that's in there as well but don't forget to take the paper off what else have I got so my two things that are non-stitchy related, but as I said, because you're my tribe, I think, I think, think, think you'll like the same things. Who was that from? That was from Anita. I'm looking for the card. So 
I ordered these earrings from Etsy and they are painted leather. When we were up in Northumberland, I went into this shop and I, they had some beautiful painted leather earrings, but they were super expensive. And so I thought, oh, I'll have a look on Etsy and see if I can find any that are more reasonably priced. And to be perfectly honest, these were so expensive that you didn't have to go much before you got more reasonably priced. So I bought these and I was even more pleased to find that she's Welsh. The lady who makes them is Welsh and she is called Mother Tucker. So that is her card that she sent me and she's on Etsy and she's got quite a few different ones. Um, and she's also on Instagram. So what I did was I went back through her Instagram and I found, I found these straight on her Etsy store. But when I went back through her Instagram, she's got loads of other ones that I thought, oh, I really like those, um, which aren't currently on her Etsy store. So um, Jess, you might be getting a little bit of a message from me. Um, because there's a couple of other pairs that I really quite like and they're really comfortable to wear and they're sort of almost like tattoo art and she does a really nice Welsh lady um, uh, print I think it is and she does a bag so I'm going to put a picture of it up there because I really like it um, and also have you ever thought about designing cross stitch because I think some of your cross stitch would be fantastic I've got that sticky thing on my hand now before I show you my last thing um, I'm going to take a little break, I think, from floss tube, just for a couple of three weeks, two or three weeks, I think. I need to just get my head focused on getting them into their exams um, and getting to the point where they have left for their exams. So year 11 have got a couple more weeks left, year 12 have got two or three more weeks left, um, year 13 have got a little bit more. And I just think I need to, um, it's not that I'm distracted by doing this because that's, that's wrong, but I sometimes think, oh, I haven't really done that much this week because I've been focusing on other things. And so um, I'd like to get some fish finishing done. I've got some ideas of my own for designing to do. And so I just, I think I'm just gonna take, take the pressure off just a little bit and I'm gonna have a little break for two or three weeks. So I will be back with the morning, the Sunday morning briefing. You don't get rid of me that easily. Um, but yeah, I am just gonna take a little break for two or three weeks. Um, that's not to say that if I don't get, if I get the chance to film a little extra one, I know I still wanna do a Mill Hill one, that I would do that. But in terms of actually showing you what I've done, I think I'm gonna take a break from that style. So we'll see, we'll see. At the outside it'll be three weeks. So I hope you're. I hope you can cope with that. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you'll find plenty of other people to uh, to fill your time with. Speaking of other people to fill your time with, um, I haven't done a little shout out for um, a long time actually of the people that I've been watching. Now I've been watching loads of people uh, because I've been watching loads of Floss Tube, but I just wanted to give a shout out to the few people that I have. So Julie, Kansas City girl in a Colorado world, she did another update video the other day. Um, she's got a new sampler out called Thursa Priscilla Davis. So um, it's absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful sampler. Um, and she's done two versions. You can have the really, really bright version that would have been the back. And there's the slightly more muted uh, version that's the front. And she stitched both of those for you to see. So that's incredible. Um, I've been watching Alba Stitcher, um, Amanda. I always love catching up with her. She's got lots and lots of lovely projects that, uh, that I really like and you'll just love her if you haven't seen her already. Made by Michelle McGraw. Um, if you wanna see a few finishes, she is rattling through them. She, um, for the last couple of years actually, has been concentrating on doing smalls and sort of seasonal stitching. And she's taught us all a good few lessons actually about when we when we actually need to stitch things if we want to have them ready for the season that year not three years hence so go and check her out and um the last pair i want to make an apology to um and that's to heather and steve the crafty stitchers who put out another video and i was thinking just two or three days before they released the video oh i haven't heard anything from heather and steve for for you know a couple of weeks and they normally do a video about every two weeks. So I was thinking, oh, they've, they're probably three or four weeks since we've heard from them. Well, Heather said, it's been three months since we last made a video. And I was like, 
what? <laughs> And she said, thank you to those people who've contacted us to check we're okay. And I felt dreadful because if I'd have been, if I'd realised it had been three months, I would have been in contact with you guys. But that just shows how fast time is going at the moment. I literally thought you were one or two weeks late. There we go. And so they're, they're such a good, good team to watch as well. Really, really funny um, and do lots of great projects. And so my last thing that I want to share with you. Um, something that I picked up today actually and it's a really funny story I went to pick I saw this advertised on Facebook marketplace and I went to pick it up and let me show you what it is first of all and then I'll tell you the coincidence that goes with it now I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fit it all in so this sign maybe if I move the curtain I can use the window <laughs> This sign says Bedlam House and it's a hand painted sign which says Bedlam House on it and I saw it and I was like that is perfect for our, that's not going to say that, our house at the moment. It's always Bedlam, it just always seems to be Bedlam and I went to pick it up and the guy said to me, he said uh, oh this, this came from my uncle's house, he lived in a house called Bedlam House in Chipping Norton, no, Chipping Camden, Chipping Camden. And I was like, that's really funny. I said, I was in Chipping Camden about three weeks ago, actually picking up um, the antique sampler that I showed you a couple of weeks ago. I said, I'm from, from the Cotswolds. And I said, I was from Borton on the Water. And he said, oh, my daughter lives in Borton on the Water at the moment, she's running a guest house there. So small, small world to be able to go and pick up a sign from Cardigan in West Wales, just like 10 minutes down the road from me. And it's come out of a house in Chipping, uh, Chipping Camden and the guy's daughter lives in Born on the Water. It's, it's just a crazy, crazy small world. Anyway, I hope you keep nice and safe, keep nice and well, and I will see you again very soon. Stay classy, Stitchers.